DIA's iconic dark horse, unofficially known as Lucifer, will get a shade darker tomorrow night. In observance of Earth, Earth Hour, the airport will cut the lights at some of its landmarks. Now first, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., DIA will turn off its LED sign along Pena Boulevard. At 8.30, Blucifer will go dark for one hour. The airport also encourages employees to turn off non-essential lighting. Earth Hour was created as a way to raise awareness about energy conservation. Tonight we hear from inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil about immortality and the exponential growth of technology. Uh, we're going to get to a point 10, 15 years from now where we're adding more time than is going by to our remaining life expectancy. People sometimes say that death gives meaning to life because it makes time short, but actually death is a great robber of meaning, of relationships, of knowledge. We're going to be able to overcome disease and aging. Most of our thinking will be non-biological. That'll be backed up. So part of it gets wiped away. You can recreate it. And we'll be able to extend our lives indefinitely. I'd rather use that word than forever. All right, well, we may not be able to teleport just yet, but apparently we can holoport. Holoport, OK. Holoport. Digital reporter Alexander Ba, who is here to explain what this new technology is and what's involved in virtual travel. Hello. That's right, hello. <laughs> Microsoft is working on what they're calling holoportation. So it's like teleportation, but you physically aren't going anywhere, just your virtual self. Holoportation uses a type of 3D capture technology to transmit a model of you to anywhere around the world in real time. Well, some say corporations know more about each of us than the government ever will. And when it comes to new technologies, like biometrics. One expert says that uh, technology is advancing faster than our ability to contain it. Would you swallow this pill so you didn't have to remember another password or wear an electronic tattoo identifying you to get better deals? It's not sci-fi. These are real and it's just the beginning of a tech revolution. All kinds of things that we don't even think about. Where we shop in the store, what things we pick up are starting to be recorded and analyzed. Tom Keenan of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute says biometric ID is advancing faster than our ability to contain it, and he calls it creepy. There's no way society can keep ahead of this. We've seen retinal scans in airports. Now even some U.S. schools use them to speed up cafeteria lines. Cars use them instead of keys. Banks are lining up to implement the technology at ATMs. It makes it easier for us, but also easier for the people who watch us. So somebody with enough data processing power, which is dirt cheap now, can go out there and follow everything that you do. Police use facial recognition software to scan huge banks of images, and they're testing ways to identify us just by the way we walk. Keenan says that technology will come to the store down the street. So next time you go into the Walmart, maybe it knows as you walk in there who you are, that you're pre-diabetic, et cetera, et cetera, and suddenly you start being manipulated. The company Nimi's wristbands use our heartbeat to identify us for finances, for passwords, for booking travel. Keenan worries we'll simply accept new technologies because it's easy without thinking hard about how others might use it. Controversy tonight over Robert De Niro's decision to pull a documentary from the Tribeca Film Festival. The documentary titled Vaxxed was slated to screen at the festival. The film was co-directed and written by Andrew Wakefield, who was stripped of his medical license after his studies linking autism to childhood vaccines were discredited. And the filmmakers say they have a First Amendment right for their views to be heard. Everything I've been telling my patients for the last 10 years has been based on a lie. Vaxxed has been axed from New York's Tribeca Film Festival. This trailer posted online is all that audiences can see of the documentary Vaxxed from cover-up to catastrophe. Who is stopping that story? Is it a corporate interest? I don't know. Why does Tribeca suddenly not want to tell this story? Why does, you know, I, I have nothing but respect for Robert De Niro and Tribeca, I can't imagine what type of pressure came down that would make them pull a movie that they were obviously behind in the beginning. The director and producer say they were not given an opportunity to appeal Tribeca's decision. They say it's an example of, quote, the power of corporate interests censoring free speech, art, and truth. 
something you probably didn't learn in school, but your kids probably will or already are. Same-sex marriage being part of a lesson plan for students across Colorado, part of an anti-bias curriculum, even for preschoolers. Jeremy, from the preschool level with same-sex couples featured in picture books all the way up to the high school level, curriculums are changing and teachers are not afraid to talk about it. homeless man in Fort Wayne is suing the city for what he says is a violation of homeless people's rights. He says the city is taking and destroying their property during sweeps of homeless camps. A spokesperson for the city of Fort Wayne says they've done 20 cleanups of homeless camps since 2011. Keith C. is calling those sweeps unconstitutional and discriminatory. He says their homeless camp sweeps are unconstitutional. They're taking their tents, coats, blankets, and other property. They're then destroying or throwing the stuff away with no chance to get it back. C says his grandfather's jacket was taken in a sweep last year. They're wrong. They're taking our personal property saying it's junk. To them it may be, but to us it's our life. Sally Seegerson has been working the streets for about four years as founder of Street Reach for the Homeless. She says one man she knows lost an irreplaceable Bible in a sweep. Facial recognition technology in the fight against terrorism. This week, ISIS claimed responsibility for a series of deadly bombings in Belgium that killed 34 people, including three suicide bombers. The attack spawned another manhunt and more questions about prevention only four months after the terrorist incidents in Paris. Facial recognition technology might help prevent such attacks, but it's a work in progress. So uh, there's been a real push to try and incorporate more and more of this what's called biometric data uh, into a record so that uh, it can be useful for law enforcement. And that's what we're seeing here. We, uh, you know, as, as soon as these events happened, we had a very clear picture of uh, who law enforcement thought was in charge, uh, who, who they thought was uh, responsible for this terrible event. You had, you know, that, that, that scene, that picture that's now being blasted on televisions all around the world. But you know, it's strange when I talked to DHS about this, they pointed out that, hey, you might feel a little bit strange standing in line at a border crossing and surrendering your biometric uh, data to the government. That's, uh, you don't have to be somebody with ill uh, designs to feel weird about that, but we give away biometric ID. And is available for Seed Creek Hot Springs. A large group of subjects wearing turbans and chanting possibly have guns. Um, at one point, some of them uh, disappeared and, and uh, started shooting what sounded like large, uh, you know, like long gun um, type firearms. Caution or overreaction? San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies questioned more than a dozen men firing guns in the desert. Welcome back. I'm Jeff Vaughn. And I'm Pat Harvey. Now, the FBI is now looking further into this incident, even though deputies say no crime was committed. CBS While the Sheriff's Department has said the men didn't do anything wrong, the story is still gaining traction online, in part because of the Sheriff's radio traffic that describes the men and seemingly suspicious circumstances. There was a large group of uh, Middle Eastern males in their 20s. Um, they grabbed their things and started hiking uh, away from the up all night, chant, uh, all our part type stuff. Um, at one point, some of them uh, disappeared and, and uh, started shooting what sounded like large, uh, you know, like long gun. I think it's a terrible thing. I think it's it's just uh, insane that there would be, be that kind of tension in Southern California to, for that issue to happen. While the Sheriff's Department says everything checked out, the FBI is now taking a look because this all happened on federal land. San Bernardino County Sheriff say that no one was arrested and no crime was committed, all but one of the guns was registered. Reporting now. Good evening. The Education Department is being forced to send in security guards to deal with growing violence in our schools. It's happening more and more as schools try to protect teachers and students. 
Throwing punches, pulling hair and ripping clothing. Two young girls in a schoolyard brawl. This is a sign of the times in WA schools. It's become so bad at Kalgoorlie Boulder Community High School that the education department's been forced to send in security guards. Last week a teacher was attacked by a student at the school. It was the last straw. Kalgoorlie Boulder is also getting new hard to climb fencing to keep trouble out. Some Delta parents are in an uproar after atheist and satanic literature is to be distributed in high school and middle schools in their area. They're getting exposed not only to a big lesson about federal laws in our constitution, but also about differing points of view, which of course exist throughout the country and the world. SEPTA says it's located a group of young children seen on cell phone video attacking riders on the L train last week. <laughs> the language is so offensive, we can't broadcast it. The alleged aggressors so young, we can't show you their faces. When you watch that video as a, as a parent and as a human being, um, you're alarmed for the well-being of those children. The video was from an incident the evening of March 24th. It shows who police say are four boys, likely just six to seven years old, cursing, hitting, and at one point even spitting at a passenger. The alleged victim, Patrick Coyle, posted the video on Facebook and wrote he started recording after after the kids apparently slapped another woman. Tuesday, we showed it to some passengers on the Market L line. I was taken back and, and, you know, actually we live in Baltimore and, you know, certainly we have our share of, of criminal stuff, but I have never seen anything like that with children of that age. The U.S. Capitol Visitor Center was crowded with spring tourists, many of them children, when a man pulled a handgun this afternoon. And with all this happening, security has been ramped up here in Massachusetts. State police are putting on extra patrols at the State House this evening. A wave of panic in Washington. Cell phone video captures the frantic moments after gunfire rang out inside the U.S. Capitol Visitor Center Monday afternoon. Officers just coming out from every direction with guns drawn. Get out, get out. There's a shooter. Uh, so we ran out of the building. Sources tell CBS News the suspect is 66-year-old Larry Dawson from Tennessee. A man with the same name had been ordered to stay away from Capitol grounds after he disrupted the House chamber last fall. Now it is worth noting that a man named Larry Dawson was arrested in Washington, D.C. last year. I have a video clip to show you here now from the U.S. House chamber last year. Listen very closely here. That's Dawson you hear shouting. <laughs> It goes very quickly. It's not easy to hear, but Dawson was arrested for interrupting that meeting of Congress in 2015. He can be heard shouting, I am a prophet of God. Now, remember that point. Here's more that we've uncovered about the local Middle Tennessee link. This out of Williamson County. I actually did a story back in 2003 on a man named Larry Dawson. Now, take a look. We have some video from the courtroom here, and there he is before a criminal court judge. Dawson was a former Williamson County school bus driver. He, we reported that he was arrested for harassing a teenage girl, and get this, we reported that Dawson claimed to be a prophet of God. Certainly, we have now heard that before. It was a troubling end to a man's trip to Hawaii. Federal officials say he created a big disturbance on a flight. Yeah, Joe, this one's a little bizarre. It all started with a man and his desire to do yoga, something we usually consider to be soothing calming. But for one Korean national who chose to do yoga on the plane, turned out to be anything but calming. The man was vacationing here in Hawaii with his wife. Officials say the couple on the return flight from Honolulu to Japan this past Saturday when the man started yelling at crew members and then shoving and pushing his wife. They said the man didn't want to sit in a seat during the meal service, so he headed to the rear of the plane to do yoga and to meditate. But according to court documents, the man then tried to headbutt and bite some Marines. They happened to be passengers on the plane, and they were summoned in to try to help the man back to his seat. Well, in the end, it got so out of hand, the pilot turned the plane around and returned to Honolulu. The man was charged with interfering with a flight crew, and now he's spending a few extra days in Hawaii at the Federal Detention Center. Now, the man explained his behavior to the FBI. He said he was sleep-deprived and claimed 
he didn't know he was supposed to listen to the flight crew's instructions. At 6 o'clock, we are learning about a possible motive for the man accused of throwing acid on his girlfriend. Gregory Marsman was charged in court today with several felonies, and he faces up to life in prison. Today, the victim's family says over the past two years, they've noticed him acting strange. 24-hour News 8's Heather Walker got a look inside the home where Marsman left notes referencing the devil. The house was torn apart. There were acid burns throughout the house in every room. I denounce God, have accepted Satan. That was one of the notes that were left behind by Marsman. There were more in his bedroom and a message on the fridge. So it looks like Today, a, the victim's is, uh, son, Keith Nemeth, began cleaning up the mess. He says his mom, Cheryl Keach, had Marshman living with her for the past 10 years. And I've noticed the past, uh, probably the past couple of years, he's been a little bit... Um, a little bit more random. We begin tonight with the terrifying scene that played out late today for commuters at a Greyhound bus station in Richmond, Virginia. A chaotic and deadly scene, an active shooter at the station shortly before 3 p.m. Tonight, we've learned officers with the Virginia State Police were reportedly there for some sort of exercise. Tonight, the gunman is dead and at least two other people are being treated for injuries after a bizarre and tragic turn of events. As the SWAT team stood down, Virginia police officials would not be specific about what kind of exercise the officers were conducting this afternoon at that bus station before the shooting. Wow. Well, in June, a temple of Baal is going to be recreated in Times Square, New York. Is that something to be concerned about? I mean, it concerns me. I think it's something that we have to be extraordinarily concerned about. And again, this is a reconstruction of a temple from Palmyra in Syria that ISIS recently destroyed. And we have to stop for a moment and ask the question, why in the world would we honor such a gruesome practice? That's true. So what, what, what is behind this? What are, what's the reasoning behind constructing that temple in Times Square? I think uh, there are two things going on. I think there might be a larger sinister plan, but I think maybe perhaps this is a materialist reading of the world where people simply say this is culture, there's nothing sinister behind it, uh, they, there is no God and there are no evil forces. But I think as Christians we have to stop for a moment and recognize once again what it is indeed that we are celebrating that we say is important. Well, this story is getting a lot of attention right now on our 12 News Facebook page. It's a photo taken on Easter. Take a good look at it. It's of the large fountain in Fountain Hills, and it apparently, look at that, it, it's in the shape of Jesus Christ. Well, a man by the name of Gary Johnson snapped the image on Sunday, and it's being shared all over social media tonight. It's not the first time an image similar to this has been captured and shared thousands of times. 